everybody. Welcome to Robert's Train Set. Um, I know I've said this many times before, but this is going to be different. Um, yes, I've got the trains running around. Um, second time I filmed this, I tried it with the sound on and it just, <laughs> you could hardly hear me. So, could have the sound off at the moment. Um, we've got a double header um, with a fairly big uh, good train behind it. And it does need the double header, but it wouldn't pull it. And uh, the old uh, DMU running around and the EMU running around. Um, but it's not really about the trains this video. Um, they will be running and you will see them. But it's really about what makes up a train set or a model railway. And it's not just the track the trains, is it? It's the scenery um, and the little bits that you have on it. The passengers on the platforms, passengers in the trains vehicles on it. So this is really about the vehicles. Um, so I've got various cars and I think I've got a derailment but we'll see how we get on. Um, and uh, definitely got a derailment. I, I should come back. Cheers. Well hello I'm back again after a bit of a hassle. Um, the offending um, wagons are sitting on the sidings in disgrace, so I've taken them off, so we've got a shorter track, still quite long. Um, so where was I? Yes, um, it's, you know, it's about the bits on the layout, and uh, you've seen I've got quite a few cars in the centre of my layout, um, and a few on the outside as well. Um, but they're not all random, some of them... Um, are cars I've owned in the past, you know, real cars. Uh, maybe not exactly the right model or the right specification, but, you know, get in there. Um, so, all you young people. So, not many young people watch this, I must admit. Most of my audience is, is around my age, I would think. But any that do, um, they're used to the digital age, aren't they? And everything on computers. Um, but in the old days, um, when we didn't have DCC and we didn't have uh, um, the computers and everything, you took photos on a proper camera with film. And it usually ended up in something like this, if you valued it, um, a photo album. Um, yes, you have photo albums on the computer, but you know these are physical books. So in this book are a lot of pictures of my old cars. Um, and I thought it'd be nice to just bring these cars off the layout and just do a little piece. And I've got little stories attached with them, some good and some not so good. And I just thought I'd try that. But we will have the trains running around. Um, and I will do some bits with the sound on when I'm not talking, because they're too loud. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this and um, I hope you find it of interest. It's really, a, mostly it's about my life, to be honest. Um, that I, you know, um, we've all got these memories, haven't we? One of the, to be honest, one of the reasons I wanted to do for YouTube, not necessarily trains, but YouTube, was um, when I'm gone, and I'm hoping it's not for many years yet, you hope, don't you? Um, I won't really be remembered. My wife's gone, uh, most of my family is gone, and the ones that I've got left, uh, we don't really... Um, keep in contact much um, and I just thought you know if my railways and my mugs on the on YouTube for the 10 years after I go then hey, I'll be remembered possibly we'll see <laughs> anyway that's that's one of the reasons so this is really a little bit of a straw through my early history um, in a way um, which I'm sure most people could be bored with but there we are it's me so whatever cheers everybody anyway we'll uh, we'll go into the film now Cheers everybody, bye. And obviously I would like to thank all my new subscribers that have come on board. Uh, very kind of you. Um, hope you continue to watch. Cheers everybody, bye. Well hello. Um, this is on my uh, um, other camera, one of my other cameras. Um, and at the moment it sounds like I'm going to go over, turn the sounds on and take a little bit of film of this um, and I'll probably intersperse it between um, bouts of cars.
So here we are everybody on the, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, the north end of the station or the north end of the railway, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, we're at one end. Um, and as you can see we've got a few trains running through. Um, hopefully the uh, the freight train has uh, set down now and he's happy. Um, and if I pan around slowly, excuse me, um, to the level crossing, and maybe zoom in a little bit. As you can see, we've got quite a traffic jam at the, uh, the level crossing, where all these trains to go and, and get away. But all these cars are from my life. Um, the coaches, to a certain extent, although not the right livery, and the bus is right, but not the right colour, and not the right um, company, shall we say. Uh, the lorry is nothing to do with me, it's just a nice looking model. So we're going to um, take one of these off each at a time, put it down onto a bit of green grass that I've uh, planted and it's grown overnight and uh, hopefully with a photo behind. Um, some have got photos, some haven't I'm afraid. But we'll see how we go. Cheers everybody. So really we're going to start here with a carriage. Um, this is when I was a nipper. Oh, didn't I look sweet? Big ears though, still haven't, never mind. And uh, this is at Paddington Station, and I was just about to be put on the train behind you, the Merchant Venturer, uh, by my mother. And I travelled all by myself down to Western Supermare, where I had an aunt who I stayed with. Um, can you see people doing that these days? So this must have been in the... Um, well, the 50s or 60s, I suppose. I'm not quite sure. I, I say I've got a not a great memory, but yeah. But uh, I remember this being taken. Didn't really take a lot of photos, you know. And as you can see, this is a black and white photo, so that really is going back. So we'll now get on to the cars. So uh, this has come from the front of the queue uh, behind the barriers for the level crossing, and I never owned this. Uh, but this is the first time I can ever remember going in a car, um, albeit a tricycle wagon. And uh, this was one of my, in inverted commas, uncle's um, cars that he owned. Um, wasn't Pickford's, I might say. I'm not sure this is the exact model, but it, it was definitely a tricycle because I remember it uh, with had handlebars rather than a steering wheel. Um, and when I say uh, so-called uncle, um, my mum had to work, there was no benefits um, and actually had to leave her husband, um, which was a great thing to do in the 50s. Um, she needed to work and I had to be looked after from time to time. I was a sensible lad, so um, it wasn't too bad. But I had lots of aunts and uncles that looked after me, shall we say. second car, um, again I didn't own this one, um, but it's got memories, uh, it's an Austin Cambridge A60 um, and the one I remember was an estate, so of the other bit on the back. Um, my landlord, uh, when I lived in London, um, in the bed sit with my mum, um, he had one of these um, and it was the first car I ever tried driving. Um, and if I had to become a heavy goods vehicle driver, it probably would help because you had to sail past the corner and then turn the wheel. Uh, otherwise, you clip the corner every time. So, this gave me my first experience to, of actually driving the car.
So you're saying there's nothing there? Um, no, it's a bit of grass. Um, the next item I had to drive was a motorbike, which I don't have a model of, so I can't show it, but it was a Honda 160. Um, it was a nice little bike, um, and I got it so I could get to work. Um, lived in Shepherd's Bush, uh, worked in Kendall Green, um, so it was a Labbrook Grove, Harrow Road area. Um, so I had this for a little while. And I'm afraid this is, um, all those young people that aren't watching this, this would make them really sick because I'm going to explain uh, my next thing and I will actually put it in the same shot. Here we go. There we are. Um, this is not a Reliant Robin, as lots of people call it. This is a Reliant Regal Superband 3 and you might recognise it as Trotter's um, trading company from Only Fools and Horses. Um, I have one the same sort of colour as this and I'm going to now bring the photos in of my actual van. So you say, um, what's, what's with the go faster stripes? There's a story behind this. Um, I was entered by my college um, to an exhibition at uh, um, Earl's Court, um, which isn't a million miles from where I was living, um, in a joinery competition. I didn't win it, um, and I had this uh, little Super Band 3, which I loved, it was great. Um, and uh, when I came out from uh, not winning, um, unfortunately a transit van stopped rather suddenly in front of me. I can't remember if it was... Uh, I was too, probably too close, you do when you're young, don't you? And I damaged the front of my car, and I, you know, I didn't take it to a repairer's. I repaired it with fiberglass, but I couldn't match the paint, so I thought, OK, we'll have a nice black stripe up the front. So here's my, my supercharged Super Band 3, but it still only had the 850 engine in it. Um, so that was my first experience, really, of the uh, thing. Now, what's going to make the kids uh, sick? Um, had the motorbike, took the motorbike uh, test in Greenford and all you basically had to do was drive round the block a few times and the man would look down the road as you went down and look up the road as you came back. Uh, got that uh, and you could drive one of these on a motorbike licence without L plates and you could take passengers and it did have a reverse and um, I drove this around for about 10 months um, and then I went to a driving school where I had um, basically four lessons. I had two lessons in an escort to learn, you know, the four-wheel car rather than a three-wheeler. Um, and then I had two lessons in which to take my test. Got it through first time, which I'm very, very pleased about, and there we are. That was my experience of getting my full driving licence. And it covers me to drive a 7.5 tonne lorry right from the off. Mad. And it's still, and I could, I still could if I wanted to. So there we are. So that's that one. So what happened after this? Well, we'll change the pictures and the model, and I'll say. So, after passing my test um, in the escort driving school. Not very soon afterwards, I um, decided I, I would prefer to have four wheels because it doesn't, they don't tip so easily as um, three wheelers do, uh, as Jeremy Clarkson uh, highlighted in uh, Top Gear quite a few years ago. Um, and what did I buy? Well, I, I went out and bought this second hand um, Ford Cortina Mark I um, in white. Um, four door, the one, the model is actually a Lotus Cortina. I didn't have a Lotus Cortina, but I had the basic 1200cc Ford Cortina Mark I. Um, and it was a nice little car. I really enjoyed this. Story with this one is, um, I learned to sail down in um, Salkham in Devon. Um, and I don't know if you've ever been to Devon, but some of the roads are quite narrow and some of the entrances, and I managed to scrape the back door on the post into the car park of the hotel we were staying at. Um, although um, I, I don't think we were actually staying there, I think actually um, we must have been going to have a drink or something like that. You're drinking those days and not get better luck. Um, actually, the holiday was based on an old Thames barge, Morgan Harbour, and we sailed from that. And I will show you a picture of the boat um, that we bought um, 
quite a few years after, but I, you know, it gave me good. I did two, I did two years going down here. Um, great fun. So uh, here's me on the boat with my mate, um, called Aquabat, and it was a fireball um, racing dinghy rim. Really exhilarating um, sail when you got it up on the plane, i.e. air under the hull. Um, and I was the, um, the crew man, and I loved it. As you can see, I'm out there on the trapeze, which you needed to keep the boat balanced, otherwise it would just tip over. Um, and you had to go from one side to the other as the, the wind changed on the sails. Um, and the little car, um, I don't know if you can recognise it from this far off, but it's a Mark III Cortina, and that was my next car. And the reason I've shown the car with the sailing is I had a tow bar on the back of this, on the back of my car, to tow the boat. And that comes into another story in a minute. So, um, yeah, I sold the, uh, the Mark I Cortina and I bought in its place this Mark III, um, which you can see in grey, which, well, grey green, wasn't it? Um, it looked really good. Um, and as you can see on the photo on the left, uh, got some nice wolf race wheels on it. Um, anyway, I was talking about the tow bar on the back for pulling the boat. Um, I had some friends in the car when we were on the M4. Um, in the outside lane going towards London um, and the traffic all came to a halt as it sometimes does and it probably still does now and I stopped and I was a reasonable way distance away from the car in front and the car um, in the lane in the middle lane uh, next to the car that was in front of me was a fair distance away from me and I glanced in my rear view mirror as I tend to do when I'm stationary and there was this huge 52 seater coach bearing down on me and I thought I don't think that's going to stop and I aimed the car in the gap um, so between the, the outside lane and the middle lane and he hit me boom, um, and obviously the tow bar took and spread the load um, anyway we went across to the um, hard shoulder after um, you think a lot of gnashing the teeth behind us um, and uh, the poor old coach had had a, a, um, a punctured radiator and wasn't going any further with its 52 passengers and uh, we drove away after um, exchanges of uh, details and so forth so that was quite good and you've got to take this relatively but the three-wheeler I bought um, was 400 and I think about 30 pounds new and this second down from the top of the range, the only the only one above it was the GXL, um, was eleven hundred and sixty-six pounds on the road in 1971. But of course, we weren't earning the money that you earn now. Um, but yeah, all are relatively um, easier, I think, wasn't it? Uh, although it's still, uh, I still had to do HP and, and whatever. Anyway, so I've got the three guns. And uh, just to do one more story, uh, just to show how attitudes and things have changed, I've got a Cortina police car there, which I, I bought originally because that's the only Cortina they did, but they bought some more out. And I've got the policeman there, and uh, one day um, the mates and I have been for, for um, a few drinks. Uh, I hadn't overdrunk, but I liked the Guinness in those days, so I'd had a, perhaps a couple of Guinnesses or whatever. Um, driving back around the Portobello Road, Notting Hill Gate area, uh, and in front of me was a, a roadblock, a police roadblock. So, there being a turn off to the right, I took it. Um, didn't think anything of it. Um, anyway, um, went out of uh, Ladbroke Grove into Bulbury Road, um, and do do do, they came after me, and they stopped me and whatever. 
Um, and what the robot was about was stolen goods. Um, well, I had a boot full of um, tools and that because from a job I was going the following day. Um, but he had a look in the boot and I got out of the car with him and, and whatever. Um, never a thought of a, a breathalyzer. I don't think they'd even be thought about those. Um, and I probably would have been over the limit. I don't know. Um, don't know. You don't really know. We're individual, aren't we, in that? We said. Anyway, so there's a few stories with the El Cortina. So you may ask why have I still got these Cortina pictures up when I've obviously got a Clubman Mini. Um, following on from the little um, skirmish on the M4 with the tow bar, um, although I drove away, I didn't manage to stop a 52-seater coach um, without some damage. Um, and the car went away to be repaired under his insurance. Um, and while I, it was away, I had a loan car and it was a 1275 GT Mini. Now, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to upset a lot of um, motorists here and say I didn't actually like it. Um, I suppose I was um, used to bigger, wider cars, and I just found the Mini a little bit disconcerting. Um, you know, it rolled a lot, and uh, it seemed very likely to tip over. A bit, bit like the, um, the Reliant. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I, I didn't love my tendature with the 1275 user. And after all, they weren't particularly quick, <laughs> and they would be really slow these days. So. But, you know, it was nice, but I never owned a Mini. Um, so, I, uh, I kept the, uh, the Mark uh, three Cortina for six years, which is, I think, one of the longest times I've ever kept a car. Um, but in the end, um, in the time after it, I moved from, or rather my mother and I moved from London up to Luton. Um, but I still worked in London, in Camden Town. So I used to go down on the train um, every day, uh, had a season ticket. And uh, just felt, you know, it was silly having this um, six-year-old car in the garage depreciated and not really using it, so I sold it. So I didn't have a car for probably the three, two or three years I commuted down. Um, and when it came, when the job sort of fell through, um, and I got a job in Luton, I thought I'll have a car. So this is what I bought. I bought an MGB um, Roadster. Uh, now, yes, it is the rubber bumper one, i.e. the one with the raised ride height and the bumpers for America, but it was still a nice car. I did enjoy it. Um, what was it, What's strange is, um, all up until the I'd had four four door car, uh, four door and, you know, five seat cars. And I went to this one, which was basically a two seat with a sort of a nearly hard board at the back that you could sit in. And, and when you get this, you don't realise how often people sit in the back of the car. <laughs> so um, I kept it for a while and then I just found it difficult, you know, for people, it, it's, it's a nice car, but it's a bit antisocial if you've got more than two people, shall we say. Um, so yeah, so I had that. And uh, I'm sitting in it, and it's empty the other side, but I probably still prefer it with the lady in the, uh, the little model. But there we are. So, yeah, I enjoyed this, and a nice colour. I like this. Um, russet brown, I think it was called. I'm not really sure if I'm getting these in the right time frame, um, but uh, a bit of a cheat here. Um, the, the model is uh, the Escort um, XR3i, I would think. Um, but I never had an Escort, but I did have the, the booted version of it, which was called the Orion. And here I had um, a 1.6i gear, um, which I think was near enough the top of the range. Um, I really enjoyed it. I can't remember how much I paid for it, but it was a really nice car. Um, did a lot of miles in the south of France with this when I was down there. Um, and yeah, really, really uh, enjoyed this car. It looked good as well. So, um, not really. I, I, the only story I could say is when I was in the south of France, some of the roads in the south of France, um, up in the hills, are quite twisty. 
and this might look like a sporty car but it wasn't actually a very good handler um, it did sort of worry me sometimes um, but yeah I still enjoyed it I've never had really you know sporty sporty cars the MGV wasn't really um, and none of my others have um, so yeah Um, so continuing on, um, I hadn't finished with Cortina, this, this I believe is a Mark, it's either a Mark 4 or a Mark 5, I think it's a Mark 5 but I'm not sure, I'm sure motoring buffs, Hubnut could probably tell me everything I need to know about it. Uh, in this particular photo you can see it's got yellowed out headlamps and um, uh, the black bits of tape to stop you dazzling the people in France, because I've obviously uh, either just come back or just go into France I would think. Uh, I didn't use to leave it on, I used to clean it all off. Um, but the car, the red car, you can see, is a Sierra. Now, I think in this particular case, it's probably a Sierra Cosworth, although it doesn't say that, but it looks a bit like it, and it's got the vents in the bonnet. Um, I just had the bog standard 1.6, um, but I actually got it when it almost, you know, first came out. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a nice car. I mean, I don't think <coughs> it looked as good as the Cortina's. Um, very mouldy shape, wasn't it? And I think it was a bit of a shock to all our systems, but did enjoy it and did many miles in this. Um, well, for me. And uh, yeah, uh, really liked it. Um, don't think there's really a story with this. I can't think of any anyway. Um, I suppose that means the, uh, the ownership of it was... Um, fairly easy and, and happy. So yeah, great. So, um, these are a few of my other cars that I've had over the years. Um, the Montego um, was a nice car, actually. Very plush inside and, and worked quite well. And as was the Rover 800 SI that I owned. Um, but nobody bothers to make a model of these, so I can't have one of them. I could have a 3.5 litre Rover, couldn't I, in the hatch in the fastback. Um, but I didn't actually own one of those, so I've got my own this saloon. Um, what's the transit van doing? Um, didn't own one, um, but had a memorable um, time um, driving down in a minibus type, one of these, um, with friends, and I was going down to South France to fix a, fix a kitchen in a flat, um, which we did. And I remember this. Um, we bought most of the kitchen in Britain, in fact I think we bought my, all of it in, in Britain um, and uh, the chap that, that, who was having the fitted um, had sorted everything out with VAT and all this and had all the payroll and we, we were stopped on the ultra route in this, um, not for speeding, um, it was customs trying to see whether we were, you know, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we were stopped but yeah, everything was in order and carried on and uh, many happy days uh, fitting this and sitting out on the terrace looking at the old trees and eating my quathons which I really enjoyed um, and the kitchen was only just ripped out you know in the last year or so I believe um, I mean it, it, the flat isn't owned anymore by the original people that I work for um, so yeah um, great fun so we're nearly at the end of the thing so all I'm going to do now I've got a couple of uh, uh, I've got a coach and a bus, so a little story with those. So, um, what you see before us is a, is a Route Master bus and a, um, a, a coach, you know, I mean, they're all, they're all slightly different, aren't they? So, not strictly true the stories the, the route master bus um i used to go on a uh, number 11 i think it was uh, the red you know route masters the london transport um and one day we went to me and my mates we went to gunnersby park in west london 
Um, and there's a pond there, quite a big pond. And muggins here. Um, they seem to have concrete bits out from the edge with with, with uh, grills in, uh, I assume for drainage or something. Um, anyway, muggins here um, brought around, and there was there was uh, uh, what looked like well, what I thought was another concrete jutting out. Didn't have a drain in it. So muggins here walked on it, and it was scum. <laughs> and I went, oops, in I went. And I remember, um, I wouldn't have liked to have been the person that sat on the seat in the top deck of the bus on the way back, because it would have been a bit wet. So that's the story with that. And the coach, um, and this is back in my childhood really, um, used to go to sports day, uh, well, used to go to sports, I think once a week or twice, twice once every two weeks, um, from my school, and we used to go quite a way out towards, I don't know, Pinner or somewhere, I think, um, Hanger Lane Way, maybe, in the old days, in a coach to have the school sports. Um, so, yeah, I've got a feeling we used to maybe have the double wheelers at the front or the back, I can't remember. But, yeah, anyway, so, nice coach. And I, I used to go on coaches down to the West Country with me mum, um, on the, um, oh, uh, I can't think, it's blue something or other. Um, but, yeah, so, coaches have been in. And even recently, I had a coach when I toured uh, New Zealand, South Island. Um, we had a coach, you know, a posky one. Like, a bit like the, the one parked by the station on the layout, but I won't bring it over. So, yeah, so this is about the end of my week. One other story, if I've got a picture of... I, I bought a Ford Focus, and I had quite a few Ford Focuses. I quite liked it, a really nice car, the original one. And uh, I bought... I bought one when they first came out. I seem to do that quite often. And um, if I've got a picture. Picture of it on the computer, I'll stick it up here somehow. Um, but took it down to South of France and uh, um, we were having a meal in a restaurant on the seafront that, um, well, Fraser San Rafael um, was where I used to go. And uh, I could, s because it was fairly new, I kept the car part where I could see it from where I was in. And then I was looking out the window and there were these, I think, either a couple of chaps or three chaps, and they were sort of walking around the car looking at it and all this. And I thought, hey, what's going on here? Somebody damaged it. So I went out and asked them. Um, and I really can't remember where, I think they were probably French, but I think they spoke English because I didn't speak French very well. Um, and I said, you know, what's going on? And they said, well, we're design students and this is the first focus we've seen and we were looking at the elements, you know, the, the design elements. So, never had that happen before um, and never since, of course, because uh, I never, you know, don't buy Ferraris and Maseratis and Rolls Royce and Bentleys. Um, I just buy the standard, bog standard cars. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, um, and uh, I will do a little bit of more running of the trains just at the end here. Um, and uh, yeah, it was different, wasn't it? Um, tell me what you think in the comments. Was it? Uh, did you enjoy it, or was it boring and you wanted to see trains? Cheers, everybody! And as I said, thanks to all my subscribers, new and old, and um, watch out for my next one. Cheers, everybody! Bye.